Welcome to Reef Rebels, the channel that explains why the Great Barrier Reef is absolutely fabulous. My name's Peter Ridd, and I've been researching the Great Barrier Reef for 38 years. You've all heard that the reef is in diabolical shape. It's been killed by climate change. It's been damaged by agricultural pollution. Seemingly every week there's new stories coming out explaining some new doom story about the Great Barrier Reef. Headlines like 93% of the reef has bleached or 50% of the coral has died since some a particular date. It's a terribly depressing story and I'm not surprised that seemingly a very large fraction of the children today are in depression about the reef and the world's environment at large. But I have wonderful news. The latest data from the Australian Institute of Marine Science, where they survey a large fraction of the reef every year, shows that the reef has never had more coral cover since records began. There's never been more coral on the Great Barrier Reef. So, this despite four supposedly devastating bleaching events in the last six years, where huge amounts of coral were supposedly killed in 2016, 2017, 2020 and 2022. How can this possibly be true that we now have record high coral cover if we lost all that much coral? Remember, coral is a very slow growing uh, species. It can't just grow overnight. This is complete proof that there's been a great deal of exaggeration about the supposed death of the Great Barrier Reef. So don't necessarily believe all you've heard about the Great Barrier Reef. We're going to look at all the threats to the reef and with the noticeable exception of the ocean pH problem, demonstrate that they're all greatly exaggerated. If you don't believe me or the data that I'm going to show, then you should come out to the reef and see it for yourself. People like myself who live adjacent to the reef are just astonished by the fact that the world believes that it is on its last legs. A combination of um, media who just loves a doom story and scientists who often have the best of intentions but may be somewhat emotional has caused this wrong impression about the Great Barrier Reef. You actually only need to get in a boat and go out to the reef and see just how wonderful and big and beautiful and pristine it actually is. But there is no doubt that on occasions huge amounts of coral die on the Great Barrier Reef, mostly due to cyclones or hurricanes, but also due to coral-eating crown-of-thorn starfish, which are natural animals, but also from the hot water bleaching events, which are so uh, well known around the world nowadays. But the thing is that these are natural events uh, and whenever this happens, you can be sure that you will hear, hear about it in the world's media. But you never hear about the recovery from these events, with all of which are entirely natural. So the mortality events are a little bit like bushfires on the Australian mainland in the sense that they look terrible while they occur, but there is always a complete recovery. So in this series, we're going to look at a lot of the data about the Great Barrier Reef to demonstrate this point. So this graph is of coral cover in an area of the central Great Barrier Reef. It's the amount of coral that's on the seafloor as, as measured each year by the Australian Institute of Marine Science in their yearly surveys. So you can see how the coral occasionally crashes, but it then recovers, in this case, to record high levels. And the good news is repeated right along the 2,000 kilometre length of the Great Barrier Reef. So this section is for the northern third of the Great Barrier Reef, which was most affected by the big 2016 bleaching event. You probably recall some of the headlines. Here are some here. Well, now you can see that this area has completely recovered from that bleaching. In fact, it's more than completely recovered. We're at record high levels in the northern area as well. But the media is not solely to blame for the misinformation about the reef. As a scientist, I'm ashamed to say that many of our, or at least some of our scientific organisations, are nowhere near as trustworthy and reliable as we need them to be. Now, you may have heard of a thing called the science replication crisis. This is where it turns out that when checks are made on newly published scientific research, it turns out about half of it is wrong. 
it sounds far-fetched that such a high error rate would occur in the, site, the field of science, but it is now well reported in all the big name journals by many, many scientists around the world. So don't take my word for it. Google the words replication crisis or scientists like John Ionides, a very famous Stanford University mathematician scientist who essentially blew the whistle on this uh, science replication crisis. But don't fret too much about this horrific statistic that maybe half of the recent uh, published science is incorrect, because it's only the recently published science. The stuff that we la rely on for day-to-day -day life is almost all rock solid. And the other thing is that the scientific institutions, or at least a large number of them, are trying to do something about this very embarrassing statistic. But I regret to say that the environmental science organisations are not so committed to solving this huge error rate, which essentially is a quality assurance problem. I think it's fair to say that a degree of ideology has crept into the environmental science organisations uh, and with the result that the truth about the reef has ended up being obscured. This series will look at how this problem has occurred and how it can be solved. So prepare for a journey to the reef. It's number one of the seven wonders of the world. The story you'll hear will be one which will be sometimes surprising, but also one of great hope. <laughs>